Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the glorious world of Skyrim, where we're about to go on an absolutely wonderful quest, as our goal is to survive 100 days in Skyrim. Now, that's not exactly a challenge. I mean, if you're playing Skyrim normally, the biggest challenge involved with that is going to be, you know, actually having the effort to wait 100 days in Skyrim. For us, it's going to be a lot harder, and there's quite a few reasons for that. Reason number one, we're playing on legendary difficulty. Legendary difficulty means we take something like 200% more damage, so in our current level 1 state with no armor, we are pretty much a one hit to just about everything. Next up, I've also decided to make it permadeath. If we die once, the challenge is over, otherwise we could just keep respawning until we'd lasted 100 days. Additionally, we're also playing survival mode, meaning we need to eat, sleep, rest, and beware of cold temperatures and all of that glorious climate, and to finally make this challenge all that extra little bit more difficult. Our lovely character today, ladies and gentlemen, is not allowed any weapons or any armor. The only weapons we can use at this point is going to be magic and our bare hands. And as you can imagine on this difficulty, that's pretty terrible. We can wear clothes and we can wear a backpack, but that is it. I'm also not allowed to exploit any of the developer's accidentally left features, like say the infinite loot chest in Dawnstar. So who are we playing today? Well, we're playing the wonderful Legless, ladies and gentlemen. This is the long lost cousin of of Legolas, but unlike his lovely cousin, uh, he's not as, I guess, mobily gifted. Yeah, he's kind of just a bit of a street urchin and pretty terrible. Now, I have just basically blitzed my way through the starting area and deliberately picked up absolutely nothing because, well, there's really not much for us to pick up. Although, as we are on our way to the starting village of Riverwood, we are going to try and harvest as many wild ingredients as we can. Of course, we can't take too long because it is midday and, oh dear, I accidentally waited time. Oh, that's a problem. Okay, well, as the day goes on and on, uh, we're going to get tired, we're going to get hungry, and we need ways of alleviating all of that. But we can certainly begin by just harvesting some basic ingredients of the forest to hopefully give us a little bit of a leg up. Now, we really, really, really can't pick any fights this early on. I cannot stress how physically impossible it is for us to do such a thing. If we encounter any creature and it gets hit off on us, we will lose a massive amount of health. When it comes to getting health back, in survival mode there are two ways of doing it, either a healing spell or a healing potion. These are going to get very expensive and very important to us. The more tired we are the less magic we have and so we don't exactly want to be spending it frivolously. Although there is a rabbit in front of us. If I can cook that, there we go. I mean you can just see how little damage we're doing. This rabbit would normally be a one hit with the flame spell but no 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 a whole bunch of lovely flames cast on it and this boy can just keep running around. Anyway that's a raw rabbit leg that will give us health and satiate our hunger, which is very important. Okay, there is a nice, lovely lady here. What is your... Oh yes, you're the fisherman. And just by standing near their fire, we will actually warm up. This is really good. I'll also steal their cooked sea bass and just leave them to it because there's nothing else we can really do. I mean, sure, we could try and pick a fight with them and steal their clothes because, hey, they might protect us from the warmth, but uh, that's kind of a little bit too dangerous. Now, as you can see, this lovely sea bass here gives us an absolutely giant quantity of hunger regeneration. This raw rabbit leg, pretty much useless basically doesn't give us any food but this fish my goodness that's perfect that's the kind of food we're gonna want to get more of so of course if we were to run along this uh, kind of like riverside bit here we will eventually reach a point where some wolves come out and attack us now wolves normally not a problem in the slightest uh, for us huge catastrophic danger problem uh, I need to be careful though not to get into the water because if I do that's gonna be really really dangerous water is cold and we definitely can't be cold oh my goodness it's Hadvar Hadvar's fighting the wolves. This is fine. Okay, right. We are not going to intervene in the slightest because there is a chance Hadvar loses. But if Hadvar can fight all of these wolves, we can just potentially harvest all of the lovely pelts off of them. Yes, we can. Good job, Hadvar. Well done. All right, let me steal these pelts. And you know what? I'm going to follow Hadvar into town. Come on, Hadvar. Let's go. All right, fantastic. We've made our way to Riverwood. This is, of course, the start of a relatively basic journey. Now, normally this is just a bit of a stopgap for most people on a journey, but for us, this could actually be become our home. I really don't know. We've got a hundred days to survive and this place could genuinely become very useful to us. Now of course we get a whole bunch of lovely free stuff given to us by this man and we will actually take all of it because it's actually kind of useful, especially these clothes. Now we do basically get to take whatever we like from this house which is great. All of this gold is fantastic. Anyway it's nice to know that we have a bed here that we can potentially sleep in which is fantastic. A free potion of healing. and We can even use the cooking pot to try and make some food. This is a 
a thing that I'm sure pretty much none of you have ever done in Skyrim because, well, when have you ever had to make food? I can make a nice bit of rabbit haunch here using just some salt and the raw rabbit leg. That's fantastic. That's going to be a nice meal. Okay, fantastic. We're set for food for a little while. Now it's time to make stock of how much money we have by selling all of our starting supplies. The best location to do this is probably the general goods store right here. The lovely Riverwood Trader. Now we're going to sell our fishing rod, our iron dagger, all of our iron sword and stuff. And there we go. We've sold everything. Anyway, good job. We are a little bit peckish in the day, but it's not actually too bad. I'm going to see if we can, uh, oh, uh, I guess power slide around the world. Sure. Thank you, Todd. Okay. So, uh, we run into a problem. It's 5 p.m. It's getting dark. Skyrim is looking beautiful, but eventually we will need to have a sleep and a nap and potentially just kind of warm ourselves up a bit. We do run into a relatively large problem in that there is no way for us to actually make money. Now, the issue is we can't make money in the way we expected to. In order to chop wood, you need an axe. In order to mine, you need a pickaxe. In order to fish, you need a fishing rod. And Skyrim treats them all as weapons. So naturally, we can't do any of that. This does create a bit of a large problem as our money-making potential potential here is incredibly limited. We can effectively rob our way through the town and just steal all of their crops, I guess. I can harvest a chicken's nest for an egg, that's a bit of food, but there's no real quests here that we can do that are actually going to generate us any particular revenue at all. One of the other problems we run into is we don't actually have a permanent sleeping spot in the world at all. And sure, we can temporarily stay in Alvor's bed and probably get one or two nights rest there, but that's not exactly a permanent residence. But yes, we need to leave and find a slightly better defended area, like say Whiterun, where there's going to be more jobs and missions for us to do. Although we're not ready to set off yet for a few very important reasons. Number one, we're hungry, and number two, we're tired, and number three, it's getting dark, and we do not want to travel when it's dark. So let's go to bed, wake up in the morning, and give it our best crack. So there we go, we're now fully rested, although we are, uh, are very hungry indeed. We are famished. Okay, well that's fine. We'll eat some food. We'll eat this lovely cooked bass. How's that? Oh, yep, that is good. We feel better, but we're still peckish. So to finish that off, I think I will have this lovely rabbit haunch that I made for myself. Lovely, we're satisfied. And yes, it's time for us to make our way over to Whiterun. Now, we do need to be incredibly careful. We need to avoid combat at all costs. We have one life. I do not want it to end now. Unlike before, we don't have Hadvar to actually assist us with combat, so we need to be exceeding careful. In terms of money to live on, I think we have enough money to effectively sleep for maybe about three or four days or something like that. So we need to find a way to make a bit of gold in Whiterun, else the inn is going to bleed us dry, and at that point we're going to be a little bit buggered when it comes to actually surviving. Anyway, into Whiterun we go. Now, normally moving around in Skyrim isn't a problem whatsoever. You can just travel wherever you like. However, for us, we can't fast travel. Normally, we have to use horses and cart, which basically means we can't fast travel to any of the major quest locations. Oh, we actually get a a little bit of a uh, gear from your ball griff which is lovely however we can't use it because it's a piece of armor and well um i can't use armor oh uh, we got a little mission here this is fantastic oh this shouldn't be too difficult at all our job is basically to see if there's some kind of plot to poison the yarl so we have to go over to arcadia's cauldron and check to see if there's been any suspicious purchases on their ledger this sounds fantastic and a complete non-combat quest as well who knows oh here we go arcadia you're here for my lovely copy i guess there have been two purchases of poison. One is the stable boy who's bought a lingering poison and a priest of RK who's bought a virulent poison. So it's off for us to go and check to see if any of them in particular have decided to do some naughty naughty poisoning of the yard. All right, so it's over to the Hall of the Dead to see if there's a little bit of evil shenanigans going on. I really do hope there's no combat here because dying on day two of my adventure would kind of be a little bit bad. And this man here apparently has lost his uh, amulet into the catacombs, which I hope is not where we're headed because he basically made it sound like there's undead down there and if that's the case well we're gonna be a little bit buggered okay so i've got to go into the catacombs here this uh, this is not safe this is not safe leave 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 oh my goodness there was a oh oh, oh my goodness it hit me okay right we are definitely not ready for combat in any way shape or form that skeleton just hit me for almost all my health i'm sorry my dude you can uh try and get that amulet yourself i am not equipped to fight a skeleton oh my god that was terrifying okay we need some kind of assistance if we're even able to go down there to check if a poison's been used we need some kind of physical back 
backup because two hits from a skeleton, we die. Alright kids, over to the stable we go. Let's just hope that the stable boy has like a complete explanation that yes, he is a mass murderer so that we can, you know, pin it all on him and I don't have to go into the catacombs for goodness sake. Okay, let's just check this random point in the stall because apparently I know exactly where- Oh my goodness, there's a dead man. Oh, a spell tome of detect life. <gasps> oh. This is actually amazing. This is going to allow us to power level alteration. Okay, that's great. And it has given us a note where, ooh, a lunar steel war axe. Uh, that seems like quite a good weapon indeed. While the moon's out burns the target for 20 points. I mean, we can't use it, but we can sell it. Anyway, there's a note here. The stable hand died. Oh, fantastic. We don't have to go to the Hall of the Dead. This is enough. Okay, so this man is basically part of a bandit group that was trying to infiltrate uh, White Run, potentially to kill the bard. And, oh, I have to to investigate the Silent Moon's camp. Um, yes, I am not ready to investigate the Silent Moon bandit camp considering a level one skeleton almost completely murdered me. Right, now I do think we should try and level ourselves up so that we're ready in some way, shape or form for just some kind of combat. Otherwise we stand no chance of surviving literally anything. And the best way for us to do that is to make use of our brand new found ability in the form of this spell. This spell is going to allow us to detect life, which allows allows us to level up alteration really really quickly and very passively so it's going to take pretty much all of our magic to cast but just by casting it yeah that gave me a huge amount of alteration skill awesome anyway i wonder if we could potentially grab ourselves some kind of follower because a follower would make our life potentially a lot easier especially if combat's involved now there is janassa here and she's potentially a great idea because she does like doing close combat however uh, she's also 500 gold and i am poor now sadly bellafor has got absolutely Absolutely nothing for us which kind of sucks but hey I think uh, we should try and make a bit of money and the best way for us to make money is to effectively just steal items from the environment and by that I mean harvest every single plant we can find and get our hands on I think I could definitely do with more ingredients though and I definitely think some kind of healing potion is going to be the most important for us so in order to do that we need to find a way of gathering wheat luckily white run is effectively the breadbasket of Skyrim and there's a bunch of farms just around the corner so I'm hoping if if I go outside, I can raid some for wheat. That's going to be a good use of day two, I reckon. Yeah, it's midday, so we've got ample time for wheat harvesting. Ooh, this looks like a place we'd get wheat. Yep, harvest wheat. There we go. Wheat added. More wheat added. Lovely stuff. Oh, and some chickens. Right, yeah, we're going to have all of this so that we can make some nice healing potions. Anyway, my character's getting nice and peckish, so I'm just going to scour cabbages from the wider landscape, grab a few potatoes too, because they're a nice ingredient to mix with, and then I'm going to go back inside, make some potions, make some money, hopefully get ourselves a friend and power level a bit of alteration. So it's back into Arcadia's cauldron we go and it's time for us to make a little bit of money. And our inventory is now looking very, very nice with actually a little bit of money we can potentially make. But hey, I'm not exactly going to need this resist fire potion so I don't mind selling it. I would love to hold on to some of these potions but I genuinely just need money because I need a companion. So now we have enough money to actually buy ourselves a companion. It only makes logical sense that we should now immediately go and pick her up and then we can take her down into the dungeons and hopefully she'll do all of the fighting for us. So, Janessa, uh, consider yourself hired. Fantastic, Janessa is here for us. And now I think the only thing that I need is actually a good night's sleep, although there isn't really a good night's sleep to be had in White Run because I need to go over to the inn. And this is where it stops being a good night's sleep and becomes a very costly sleep. So, Holder, how much is it for a room? 10 gold. Oh, no gold, no bed. Great, lovely. Right, uh, let me give you some money then. Holder, I hate you. 9 gold, I was one gold short and you wouldn't give me a bed fine have this bottle of wine you're a scam artist so our bed is lovingly positioned up here and oh dear i'm accidentally stuck okay fantastic todd you almost killed me there that could have been the run over but there we go here is our lovely bed for tonight all right i definitely need some more healing potions so uh where's arcadia where are you you're just talking at me arcadia look i need you here so i can buy ingredients from you i need more healing potions and so that means i need to do more trading with you all right there we go some meal made. We're in a bit more of a refresh state. I have health potions. It's day three. I think I am brave enough to potentially go and fight that thing in the dungeon. Now, potentially there's a skeleton literally right here. Potentially there's a skeleton is further away. This is a monster that literally no one should fear fighting. However, I fear this monster. Consequently, we need a heal spell ready in one hand, a damage spell ready in the other. Let's go fight a monster. All right, skeleton, are you here? Nope, skeleton is not here. Neither is man who gave quest. Please tell me man who gave quest is not, is not dead. Is he resting? Where is the man who gave quest? Oh, no. 
Okay, well, potentially the skeleton we let in here has killed him, but um, if that's the case, that's fine. Let's go recover that amulet of RK. Oh, frick, he's right there. Oh, jeez, you angry boy. Right, Skelly, sizzle. Sizzle. There we go. Oh my goodness, we got him. Yes, Janessa, you are so worth the money. Right, let's steal their loot. Loot stolen. I can hear. There's another skeleton, Janessa. You know what to do. Yes, Janessa. Look, we are the best adventuring combo. And by that, I mean you do all the work and I just sit here and do basically no damage. Okay, I can definitely hear another skeleton here. Yep, there's a skeleton right here. Oh my goodness, he's got a great sword. Okay, Janessa, that one's definitely more on you. Cool, he's dead. All right, we'll steal that anyway. Any good loot? Oh, there's something here. Block skill increase. Fantastic, that's good. And, oh, a virulent poison. Right, that's where the poison's from. Okay, okay, okay. So I went into this dungeon. I found his lovely amulet. Now, I mean, we could wear it. However, we can't because this technically counts as an item that is too powerful for us to have. And it would give us 10 points of health. I mean, I suppose we could maybe sell it. But no, I mean, we went in there. We had to fight like four skeletons that could almost one hit me. So he probably has a decent reward for it. Anyway, here's your amulet. Oh, gold. Yep, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Gold is good. Fif 15. 15 gold. 15 gold. I had to hire a bodyguard who cost 500 gold to get that amulet and you give me 15. Could have sold it for more. Oh my god. Right. Okay. Uh, day, day three of the adventure. It has not gone well. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the glorious world of Skyrim where we're in day four of our lovely adventure with the wonderful and majestic Legless. Now we have finally hit level four and the reasoning is because I've spent pretty much all of the remaining third day and most of the start of the fourth day leveling up our alteration as much as possible. The reasoning is very simple. Eventually we can start casting alteration spells that give us armor and that armor is going to be critical in terms of keeping us alive because walking around as a fleshy noodle with basically no protection is quite a challenge indeed. I've also run around all of Whiterun and harvested every single ingredient and plant that they actually have access to and we're going to smith them up into potions so that we have enough money to travel all the way to Rift and the reasoning is because basically as all of our money making relies on us being able to make potions and there are no longer any ingredients left in all of White Run, then I need to make some money, bugger off to Rift and collect some more ingredients and then come back after a few days when all of the plants have regrown. Now of course there is no fast travel in a normal sense in terms of us just being able to click on a map and travel there, however we are able to travel via the horse and cart, which is exactly what we're going to have to use. So it's going to cost us a little bit of money every time we move across the world but it just has to be this way. Hopefully you're not too expensive. Ah, you're not too bad. 20 gold to get to Riften. That's quite acceptable. Right, Janessa, off we go. So as we finally move ourselves into our fifth day, we have arrived in Riften. And well, uh, there's a lot of people around. Riften is very noisy. It's got a very high population. Now, of course, because I've been leveling up my illusion magic, I'm going to uh, buy myself a lovely room just for the night. And this lovely room here is my room. Although I'd love to get to it if Janessa Janassa wasn't standing in the way like the classic Janassa that she is. Anyway, so it's time for me to go to sleep and wake up in a few hours time at a lovely 6am so we can begin our adventures of harvesting all of the wild ingredients of Riften. Okay, fantastic. I found the potion shop in Riften. It's Elgrim's Elixirs and hopefully we're going to basically be able to rob his lovely potion crafting station and generate ourselves a few very important items. Alright, time to make some new potions. Can we literally mix anything? No, we cannot mix anything at all. Wow, that is just amazing. All right, if that's the case, I'm going to have to try and buy some wheat and make some new and improved health potions that will helpfully sell for a little bit more money. So please tell me you sell wheat. No, you do not sell wheat. Seriously, of all the things, you don't sell wheat. All right, okay, I'm going to go get some ingredients. All right, my alteration skill is doing really good. It's up to 37. Definitely, I think we're going to try and spend most of today getting it up even higher, but also we do need a whole bunch more fish. So it's straight over here to the docks of Riften, where hopefully we're going to be able to go for some swimming and not die. Generally, there is a minor risk that some kind of angry crab will locate me, and in doing so, uh, I could be dead. Oh, I see some fish, some Apsean fish, river betties, that's it. Oh, ingredients, ingredients in fishy form. All right, this is fantastic. All right, now I'm gonna go make some potions, but before I do so, I probably want the gift of charity, so I'm going to uh, spend one gold coin to boost up my speech craft, and that should hopefully allow us to make more money off of the potions we make. And if if I remember correctly, we can mix some of the fish we've made with salt in order to make fortify restoration potions, even that we don't necessarily know that that's even an option. So we can grab a Absian long thing, put it with one of our 95 salt piles, and wabam, a potion.
potion of fortify restoration has been made we can do the same with a cyrodelic spade tail and there we go another lovely potion has been created so we're going to make a whole bunch of fortify restoration potions because uh they sell for a lot of money so we're bam away we go and yes 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 we are looking very good indeed all right please elgrim i've got all of these lovely items that i need to sell you okay we've got a whole bunch of poisons now i can't use poisons because well i can't coat them onto anything so they're pretty much useless for me there we go we're up to 790 gold this is a miracle oh finally glorious profit now one thing i've realized i need to do is have a steady and continuous stream of income and truly the only way to guarantee that in skyrim is via the medium of marriage because by marrying someone you can make 100 gold per day off of their existence so consequently i'm going to buy a amulet of mara here for 200 gold this is basically the sign that hey you're in the business for love now in order for me to of course marry someone i am going to need to complete their quest and i think the best person to pick for all of this is yazolda the trader who lives in white run her quest is relatively simple all she needs is a mammoth tusk oh my god i found the mammoth tusk okay it's um it's quite a big boy uh but I'm gonna do it. It is gonna be our first crime, but we just kind of have to do it. So away we go. Hopefully they don't mind that I'm just walking out with a giant 150 gold mammoth tusk on my body, but this is going to allow us to marry the individual we want to marry. Okay, fantastic. Then I think we're gonna need to stock up with food for travels, and then we should be ready to go on our lovely journey. Ah, lovely. Right, we've made our way to White Run, and I imagine none of the plants have reset since we've returned, seeing as I've only been gone, what, a couple days, and oh dear, I'm starting to actually get chilly. Well, that's fine. We'll just run our way inside, crank up a little bit more alteration magic, and oh my goodness, are we still casting it? How am I just casting? I don't have enough magicka for this, but um, is this giving me skill still? I mean, I'm still detecting life. Oh my, is this just going to infinitely level me? Please say this does. Todd, have you todded? Todd, is, is this a todding? Is this a Toddington? Yes, we're leveling. Oh, Toddington. My sweet, sweet boy. Oh my goodness. Right, well, um, I guess this is just where I AFK for a bit. Thanks, Todd, for this unique gameplay mechanic. Yes, that is what we're calling this. Oh, it's ended. Oh, Todd, why did it end? Okay, it wasn't infinite, but that was definitely damn close enough to being infinite. Now, yes, none of the plants have respawned, but that's okay, because we're not here for the plants. We're here for Yazolda. Here we go. I have your mammoth tusk. And, of course, in return, she's going to teach us a little bit of speech skill, which is really, really useful. And finally, I need to go and do a little bit of marriage. Now, this does involve wearing a Amulet of Mara, which is technically an enchantment but it is just a temporary thing so consequently i'm okay with it it's not i don't think it ruins the run it's simply to get married the fact that we have to wear it is just an inconvenience so we're bam here we go your zold is interested oh yes fantastic the wedding is sorted oh right now i must travel right the way back to riften that's another 20 bucks down the drain but hey it's fine oh my goodness i can double hold down the spell and it's just hold it's just casting it it's just maintaining the cast of it todd todd i have no magicka oh dear oh dear dear well uh we're gonna power level up to alteration 50 uh this is gonna be really 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 useful because we can half the cost of our alteration spells oh thank goodness this is absurd todd thank you for releasing so many versions of skyrim that you know even to this day you can just still do stuff like this and it just works god damn it it just works okay welcome back it is the ninth day of legless's adventure and well things have gone very well we have leveled up alteration to level 90 which is really really good this has come with a few downsides we are now level 15 is being level 15 a bad thing uh well yes and no no in the fact that we can now cast better spells we have a whole bunch more magicka so we can cast spells for longer we've got a bit more health the only downside is now enemies are stronger instead of facing level 1 wolves we are now potentially facing level 15 wolves or level 15 undead all of which are terrifying anyway it is time for me to actually get married now because i spent all of day eight just leveling so day nine uh let's get married let's have our ceremony ah oh, here we go wonderful i've got all of my companions here and by that i mean i've got janassa that's literally it oh it's marriage time oh here we go i get to say i do here we go it's beautiful i do now and forever oh it's wonderful i'm married oh it's glorious congratulations now this is great because i get to decide where i want to live and i can just say hey living with you would be perfect this means i now have a bed that 
I don't need to pay for right in Whiterun, which is fantastic. Oh, this is glorious. I now have a key to her house. And now I can ask, hey, would you like to cook something for me? And there we go. She's just literally made a straight up home cooked meal for me. This is amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. See you, Yazolda. Now, every day she'll also generate 100 gold for us, which is fantastic. But most importantly, hey, we got a, we got a proper home cooked meal. Look at this. It's great. Increased health, magicka, and stamina recovery, and it restores 380 points of hunger. That's wonderful. Now, what I will do is I will also pick myself up a lovely spell to boost my armor, which I can do from this lovely cult wizard. So I'm going to buy this lovely spell of stone flesh, which will increase our armor rating by 60 points for 60 seconds. And that should be a absolutely fantastic spell to cast. Because if I go into my inventory right now and look at my imperil, my armor rating is zero. But if I cast this, suddenly my armor rating is boosted to 120. That's actually pretty good. I mean, it's not necessarily fantastic because it doesn't last permanently. It only lasts 60 seconds, although I'm pretty sure that can be extended. Yes, well, bam. With stability, we will extend the length of it. And I'll also actually boost mage armor an additional time so that spells like stone flesh are 2.5 times stronger. So yes, now the spell lasts for 90 seconds rather than just 60. And now if I were to cast it again, my armor rating is 150. Lovely. So we have a way to get 150 armor for 90 seconds. That is inherently fantastic. So what we're going to do now is travel back to Whiterun and then use it as a base of operations to begin our adventures into the wider world. And bam, here it is, Yazolda's house. Yes, we've made it home. Oh, this is our glorious home. Oh, it's wonderful. It's comfy. There is only one small bed, so we're going to have to kick each other out when the other one's asleep. And it's a bit awkward what with Janassa just standing here, but hey, we've got all of the equipment we could possibly need. And by that, I mean we have a cooking spit. Right. Uh, I do want to go to sleep, but sadly, Yazolda's using it. So I need to talk to her, uh, get her out of bed, and then as soon as she's out of the bed, steal it. There we go. Yes, I've stolen my bed. Fantastic. Right. We're going to sleep for about four hours. This does force us to level up, which is fine. We're going to improve our health, and we have one perk point to spend. Where is it going? I'm going to dump it into Alteration Dual Casting, which I think means we can dual cast maybe our Oak Flesh spell for even more armor. But hey, I think it's time for us to do a few basic missions in the local white run area okay um an incident has occurred uh it's not my fault i would like to preface everything by saying it's it's not my fault although that is a lie it is my fault uh it's day 10 still and i was trying to travel to a location to get more wheat okay it is as simple as that i wanted to travel to find more wheat so i could make more health potions in order to heal myself in combat and i remembered that in skyrim there is a location with a lot of wheat, the largest quantity of wheat on the map, and that location is Rorikstead. And then I thought you could fast travel to Rorikstead, and whilst looking through the fast travel menu, I thought, oh, it's probably not Rorikstead, it's Valkreef. And here I am in Falkreef, not Rorikstead, which is like somewhere over here. Um, yes, I'm in Falkreef, and I have no way to leave Falkreef because there is no stable, and I can't fast travel unless there is a stable, which means I am completely trapped here until I find a way to leave on foot, which is, of course, insanely dangerous now that I'm level 15. Any quantity of random encounters can now affect us on the road and potentially instantly murder us. So I'm going to rest up for a night's rest in the inn, known as the Dead Man's Drink, eat up a whole bunch of food, and then get prepped for a journey. Right, this is our lovely bed to sleep in for the rest of the day, which is fantastic. Right, there we go. We're fully rested. We're ready to rumble. Let me just eat some more snacks. Right, out into Skyrim we go. Fantastic. A glorious journey awaits us, and hopefully one where we don't die on this glorious journey. Right, so Rorik said is somewhere around here, and even though I know it's an incredibly stupendous and silly journey, journey, I think it is entirely possible that we could make it all the way to Rorikstead. It is possible. We are going to need a little bit of supplies though. I'm going to need to grab some kind of backpack with a bedroll inside of it and I'm going to also need to cook up some decent meals. Alright, time for some basic goods. Okay, so we have a lovely dark leather backpack here with bedroll which we're going to have to buy for 137 gold. It's a bit expensive but we do need it. But other than that there's not really much we can grab from this man. And there we go. Okay, I think we are about as ready 
as we can get for our giant travels. So I'm going to put on my amazing backpack, which now means that I look like a proper adventurer. Well, a proper scruffy adventurer, considering I don't have any armor. But it's fine. I'm ready to go. We're going to go all the way to Rorikstead, and we are going to stick to the road. We cannot go off the road. If we go off the road, we die. So we're going to stick to the road, maybe gather the occasional herbal ingredient and remedy. But if anything is, like, tempting us off the side of the road, I don't know, there's a nice little sign saying free gold this way. I am not trusting it. I am not trusting anything. This entire location is a giant nightmare scam. Okay, so we're not too far from Rorikstead, and there appears to be a uh, one farm just right here, and I don't think it's tended to by any humans. I can see some kind of weird ethereal ghost outline next to a corpse. I'm going to presume that he's probably friendly. I mean, we can get close and use Detect Life to work out uh, what his sides are. Oh, he is not friendly. He is not friendly in the slightest. That is not a friendly dude. Um, there is a ghost, a really angry ghost. Ghosts are vulnerable to sparks, right? Oh my goodness, he is an angry boy. Right, hit him with some sparks. There we go. That's kind of lowered his ghost form a bit. And oh yeah, it's actually doing damage. Quite a bit of damage. There we go. Die, ghosty ghost. Yes. Yes, go. Yes, good. Do it. I've killed him. It, it took a lot, but there we go. I've murdered a ghost. Okay, well... Let's search out the plantation to see what happened here and see if there's any wheat lying around because that's all I care about. Okay, now there's no reason for us to actually continue on with that quest line because the reward for completing it is that we can stay in the farmstead as our own house. And let's be real, uh, that's not actually valuable for us at all. What is valuable for us is this lovely village with all of these wheat crops. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It's safe, it's got wheat, and that is all we need. Hello, you guys. Oh, look at these great, lovely locations. Oh, wheat for days. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, so many potions can be made. So many potions. Okay, I think I have successfully taken everything I could possibly want from Rorikstead. So now it's just straight into the inn and I need to somehow work out a way back to White Run. Okay, it's a brand new day. It's day 12 of our adventures and I think it's time for me to leave Rorikstead behind. It was nice to visit. We got all of the necessary crops we wanted and we're now up to an absolutely wonderful 11 wheat, okay? It might not sound like a lot, but that's 11 potential health potions we can make which is absurd all right so it's off down this lovely hill we go on a glorious adventure and oh that appears to be uh definitely a bandit yep that is very clearly a bandit of some shape form or variety hello there bandit outlaw yep you are going to get uh, stabbed a bit i can see that there's some kind of ranger off in the distance now one of the predicaments we find ourselves in is we have to assist janessa in fights simply because if we don't she might lose these one-on-one -on -one fights and if she loses these one-on-one -on -one fights we die there is no way we survive she is our entire damage output and she absorbs all of our hits which means we have to help her do everything and i'm going to sizzle him alive with my crispy flames and there we go sizzled alive wonderful oh what a glorious combat encounter that was we actually did uh pretty good in that situation i'd say I mean, heck where do where does this even go this takes us to markov well what if we just say bugger it to actually fighting these bandits and just instead leave. Just leave them alone. We don't need to fight them. I doubt they have any wonderful loot that we particularly wanted or needed. Oh my goodness, it's the first time I've seen one in ages. It's a fast travel horseman. Hello there, fast travel horseman. Oh, I could have used you a long, long while ago when I was stuck in the middle of bloody nowhere. But hey, it's fine. All that matters is that I've made it safe to civilization and we're all the better for it for we are loaded up on wheat. That wheat is empowering. It gives us money. It gives us health. Oh yes, now we get to see uh, Uncle Rogvir get his head cut off. Well, that's fine. We don't need to worry about any of that. Who cares what's going on over here? I am here to steal all of the ingredients. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the 13th day of our glorious survival, and we're ready to actually level up again. I've spent most of the night kind of wandering around solitude, stealing all of the ingredients in the city and leveling up my alterations some more, but now we could do with a little bit of a rest, so it's into the winking skeever we go. We're going to level up, and then we're going to explore the kind of local and safe area around solitude the hope being that there'll be lots of ingredients there for us to loot okay fantastic this is our lovely room for the night so we're just gonna sleep here for a couple of hours or until all of our tiredness goes away we've got some more points to sink into leveling up this is where we've run into a problem so we could improve our health but i really think i've reached the point where i know there is absolutely nothing we can do no matter how much health we have we are still going to get one hit by everything we run into so that's more points into magic 
Magicka. At the same time, I do want to improve our ability to defend ourselves. So I'm going to pick up Apprentice Destruction and hopefully we're going to be able to grab some improved destruction spells that will actually do damage and those spells that actually do damage should hopefully actually, you know, level up our destruction because that's the biggest issue we have. Because of the difficulty we're playing on, we're doing so little damage to our enemies that we're not actually gaining anywhere near enough experience to level up. So before I head out into the wider world, I'm going to spend some of the money that I have on me. Oh god, only 277 gold. Uh, it's not much, but hey, I will spend some of that money hopefully buying a spell. But in order to get some more money, uh, maybe make a couple potions? Okay, and that should hopefully give us all of the money we could possibly need, just in the form of resisting frost potions. This is effectively the only way we can make money and survive in this universe. So even though it does feel a little bit cheesy at times, I think it's completely justifiable. Anyway, we're going to make 531 gold selling all of those bad boys. Very, very good indeed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the wonderful elemental bolt spell. Uh, it costed a little bit of money, but it is actually very much worth it. And in my opinion, probably the most overpowered early game spells you can get, these lovely elemental ones. So we're going to grab that. That should mean that we can do a little bit of damage. Now we're going to go and harvest some ingredients on the local countryside and then bugger off back to Whiterun where we can actually make some money and hopefully do some of the quests. All right, here's our new spell, lovely elemental bolt. It doesn't even cost that much magicka, like 50 magicka to cast it. Like I can do that. Oh, look at that. That's a big old powerful boy. Okay, we're going to be using this bad boy in our glorious combat, and hopefully this should be a nice easy victory. Now, snowberries are a really, really useful ingredient, and in fact there's a whole bunch of winter environment ingredients that I have not been able to get myself a hold of, and seeing that we're in solitude and we're next to a winter biome does just make sense for us to dip our toes into it, and as long as we don't die, we should be able to run away, you know, in the worst case scenario. It's, it's all going to be worth it. Okay, there's ingredients here that we just can't get anywhere else and those ingredients could be the difference maker. Now I can already see like a wolf right there so I'm just gonna charge up a big old elemental bolt. Go! <gasps> kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Whoa! It didn't kill it, but that was kind of good enough. It's buggered off. Okay, wow. That was damage. That we actually did damage. Look, we got like maybe 5% of the way towards leveling up. Oh my goodness. Okay, right, you're coming back at me? I don't think so. Oh, yes. Okay, if we charge up these spells, we can do a lot of damage. Yes, it cost us you know, pretty much all of our magicka to kill a single wolf, but that's uh, that's focusing on the negativities. Focus on the positives, and the positives are we killed something. Okay, it's day 14. I've made it back to Whiterun for the first time in quite a few days since we started our accidental journey searching for wheat, and well, things are looking good, even though the textures have bugged out a bit, but hey, that's just Todd doing Todd things. It's okay, just ignore it. Uh, we've done great. Our adventure has gone well, but most importantly, we've come back stronger than ever with more money, more power, and more experience. My goal is to focus on a steady production of restoring magicka potions, as that is going to allow us to hopefully stay alive. Uh, I also want to collect all of our monies from our loving wife, potentially rest up as well, and get a free food. But hello there, Yazolda, how have you been? Oh, has the store made any money? Here we go. Oh, we've made a cozy little profit. This is my share. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, 400 gold! Yazolda, you shouldn't have. Oh, you are wonderful. And hey, would you mind cooking something for me? Oh my goodness, Yazolda, you are insane. Your marriage is so overpowered. It's so overpowered. You just literally, you get married to them and then you do nothing. You do nothing and they do everything for you and you just harvest all of their resources. Oh, it's it's insane. Well, um, I'm going to go rest up and then I'm going to go make some lovely potions. Time to have a big old sleep for three hours. Yep, that has fully rested me. Now time to go make some potions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you know what? I think we're actually ready to go and do our first quest. That's right, we're going to actually do a quest in the wider world. We're going to complete it, and it's going to be a tough one. We're going to investigate the Silent Moon's camp, because these guys have decided to potentially kill the Yarl, and, well, we like the Yarl. He, you know, should hopefully live. We don't want to poison him. So it's over to here we go to work out what we can do to put these evil bandits down, save the Yarl, collect the prize, do all of that jazzy stuff, and hopefully we won't die in the process. 
Now I'm feeling pretty good. We've got a decent amount of potions on us. So life is okay. We do need to be careful in terms of the wildlife. Now that we're up to level 16, things like giant saber cats can spawn and they're just, you know, a bit too spooky and unfun for us. Okay, into the toomy area we go. We've got some combat to do. We've got my companions. I think we are, we're ready to rumble. We're ready to rumble and ruin the world, hopefully. I'm just gonna bounce my way up the hill. Okay, now there's definitely angry stuff here. That's a cave bear. That is a cave bear. That's a cave bear. <laughs> oh, it's a very fast cave bear. Okay, we cannot have that. Janassa, you do your thing. You do your thing. Um, evidently, we need another um, giant flame, Atronach, uh, to do its thing. Cave bear! Cave bear! Cave bear, is, is it still on me? It's not still on me. Okay, it's not still on me. I'm all good. Summon a flame, Atronach. Flame, Atronach is gonna help us fight the cave bear. Uh, this should really max out the DPS on the bear. Right, okay, I'm gonna hit the side of that cave bear. There we go. Look, I did my part. I've summoned in a beastie. I got Janassa here. Beastie almost dead. Goodbye, cave bear. Goodbye. Sweet. Okay, we killed a bear. Okay, I'm in the Silent Moon's camp, and I'm pretty sure I'm in a location that they can't even access. I don't think there is a pathway up here, so I can probably just, like, plink damage down upon them, and there's nothing they can do. Oh, yep, there is very clearly a man walking around there. Right, let's hit him with a double level elemental bolt. Bam. Okay, that missed him entirely. Well, that's fine. I gave it a try. Oh, wow, there are some angry bandits around here. Oh, there's one with a bow. There is one with a bow. Okay, I cannot fight bow bandits. Um, they have a ranged weapon. I am a dead person. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay, okay. You want to play that game? Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. I missed that one entirely as well. Oh, okay. You you shooting at me? You shooting at me? I do not think so. Oh, your bandits aren't very high level, are you? You're not high level. Oh, I can kill you. We're going to use the AoE effect. There is one casting magic, but luckily I actually have a decent absorb magic. I'm going to cast stone flesh though, because there is a chance I can actually defend from these attacks. Right, stone flesh up. Here we go. Right, if you guys just want to focus on me, I will more than happily rinse you guys. There we go. That's one bandit dead. Lovely. Oh, and I did get hit by magic and oh ho, 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 that's very painful that is so painful okay i lost a lot of life there but it's okay it's okay we survived that and also we get to absorb magicka from our enemies now we do resist like 30 percent of all spells so that frost mage isn't the biggest danger in the universe i do want to know what janas is up to i hope she's not dead i do hope she's kind of like busy soloing all of them somewhere um because that is the exact kind of thing i could see her doing <gasps> No! 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 <laughs> no! Uh, this is not safe. This is not safe. Leave, leave, leave. Oh my goodness. There was a... Oh! Oh! Yes, Janessa. Look, we are the best adventuring combo. I'm married. Oh, I do now and forever. Oh, it's wonderful. No! Oh my, the hubris. Oh my goodness. Well, legless, I'm afraid you've been leg lopped. Uh, this is the end of Legless's journey. Legless died aged 14 days old. Um, he died to a single frost wizard casting two ice bolts into his head. They were a level one bandit effectively and uh, Legless died. I would like to say that happened despite the fact that Legless has 150 armor and is able to block 30% of all spells that hit him. That's just how absolutely dangerous it is to play with this challenge. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the adventures of Legless are over, but that does not mean that this challenge is completely done for good. If you enjoyed the impossibilities of this challenge, then I will give it another go. I'll even make it harder, and I do want to see if I can survive for 100 days in Skyrim with all of these amazing difficulties. Seriously, the experience of this world is absurdly wonderful when your character has only one life and you have such a limited way of surviving. Becoming a traveling magician slash potion maker was just such a stupendously fun time. This challenge was wonderful. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to give it a like. I would love to see people writing the Chronicle and, and the day in the life of the wonderful Legless to see how the friends we made along the way would react to our death. Who knows what happens to our wife now? She knows we go off to adventure, but we will just never return and she'll just keep piling up money for us until one day we'd return and become a billionaire. Ah, well, there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Legless. I've been the Spiffing Brit. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a like. Why not consider subscribing for more of these lovely adventures? And of course, a huge thank you to all of the majestic patrons and YouTube channel members. Seriously, you're all fantastic sausages. And hey, if you sat there wondering what to watch next, look no further than this video on screen now. And with that, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Goodbye for now.